Well, good evening, all of you. All of you here in the Facebook land and all of you there who are waiting in Zoom land. We're going to be letting you all in here in just one minute. Uh, we're really excited about being here uh, this evening. Uh, my name is Dr. Gloria Willingham Toure. I'm the CEO of Afrom Global Organization and the founder of the Annual Villager Awards. The Annual Villager Awards now has been going on almost 10 years now. Uh, the uh, village projects have been around even longer than that since the year 2000. Uh, we have been recognizing people who uh, are exemplars of lifting as we climb, which is our motto. So what does that mean? Lifting as we climb, it means people who are not only successful in whatever their chosen endeavor happens to be, but they also have made it a, a way of life uh, for them to go ahead and also lift others, to open doors for others and to make success possible, not just for themselves, but for other people as well. And what we like to do with that is that we really like to try to get to know who they are. We like to sort of tell you, let them tell you, not us, let them tell you a little bit more about who they are. Uh, we want you to know who they are. We want you to learn from their life experiences. Uh, before I get started, just a little bit of little housekeeping things here. I'm gonna be admitting people in there, some of you, who will be admitted and you will be visible on screen or your name will be visible on screen, uh, just so that you know that. And uh, some of these are people whose names I already had ahead of time. Uh, it's being uh, related or business associates or whatever related directly to uh, Kim Prince. And so of course, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have you there. So we want this to be as conversational as possible this evening. Uh, I'll introduce her and you'll have a chance to listen to what she has to say in response to my question. If you have questions or comments, would you please enter those in the chat, in the chat, please? And then we will sort of call on Kim and let her respond to some of those questions. And then there will be an opportunity for you as well uh, to directly speak to her, for her to speak to you, uh, because this is a conversation. That's what this is intended to be. So welcome, and uh, we are live on Facebook. I just want to make sure that you know that. Also, uh, this session is indeed being recorded, and so I want you to know that as well. So I want to tell you just a little, little bit of background on how we in Afrom Global came to know this woman, Kim Prince. I had not met a Kim before. I, I think I had spoken to her a little bit on the telephone. We were trying to uh, arrange to give a uh, Villager Awards to Greg Doolin. We had followed him and had learned about him and his family. And it was at a time when we were trying to find uh, business persons uh, within the LA basin and, and in, throughout LA County and Orange County and anywhere else really, we, we reach out long, great distances across the whole country. And indeed, we also look even in, in the African continent and across the diaspora when we are looking for people that we feel are really people that we need to bring to the forefront. Uh, a little differently. And so we heard about, we all knew about the soul food restaurants. Of course we knew about that. Everybody knew about that. But we never really knew anything about the story behind those restaurants. Except that I remember one day, one of our, one of our advisors happened to be there uh, in one of the restaurants and they, had, they saw a picture of uh, Greg's father that was hanging on the wall there. And she said, I think I knew him. And I remember, I remember him. And she came back and told us about it. Well, after that, and the more we learned about that family and what they had done, that was when we decided we needed to give this award to him. And we did. So he, show, he actually showed up. I was really happy about that. We never know when we get a villager awards, who's going to show up and who's not going to show up. Some people are just, you know, busy. People are always busy. And some people are just busy and they just can't make it. But he showed up and he, had, he brought Kim with him. And he introduced him to me. I remember I was at the desk there and to everybody else, we have a welcoming team. He introduced her. The thing that I remember particularly about her at the time was that she was so immediately friendly. One of the, the kind of environment we try to create at the Village Awards is we try to create a feeling that we are, uh, we like people to feel as if they're at home. We want it to feel like it's a homecoming. And that's what it felt like. That's exactly what it felt like. And I, I was surprised at that because she went around, she was, she was at home. She was just at home and everybody noticed that. And when we saw that and, and, and heard a little bit about her, then we started to learn more. That's when we started to learn about her in the restaurant side of it. That's when we learned that this was a shrewd businesswoman. That's when we learned that 
that this was a woman from not only was she a shrewd businesswoman, but she's also from a family where that's, that's a part of their history. And she's a part of that history moving it forward. And so knowing that, we, we started thinking and we looked up some information. We decided this is, this is the one. This is the one we need to have for a 2021 Villager Award. Well, originally it was going to be 2020. And then we had to put 2020 off because of the, the uh, pandemic. And at the time, we were thinking, well, we can't do it live. And so we decided to put it off. But as the year went on, we decided, well, wait a minute. That's no reason to stop. We can hear her story virtually now. And we think that may be even better for us. And so that's what we did. Uh, we did an initial interview with her, a video interview, which was excellent. Some of you may have seen that already. We posted that already uh, on Facebook and I believe it's on YouTube now. And then now we're ready for the conversation. The conversation is where we really get a chance to hear her talk. We get to talk to her. We get to know a little bit more about her in her own way. Uh, she will tell you about her and her family. Well, let me let me just let me just bring her on here first of all before I say all of that, and uh, let's just get going. Uh, Kim, can you come into the room now? We have her waiting out there in the foyer in the green in our green room. <laughs> um, <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. We are so happy to have you here. I just I just don't hardly know how to say it. I'm just really happy to have you here. And if I'm going to just sort of let you, as an introduction here, if you can just for a couple of minutes, just sort of tell us a little bit about, you were at the Village Award, that the Gray got that award. I want, I want to know, this, this is not a commercial, you all, I just want to know, okay? I just want to know what your impression was when you were there. Just tell me a little bit about that. Well, thank you. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to be in front of you today. And thank you for the acknowledgement. Um, I remember the 2019 Villager Award attending that with Greg Doolin. Um, when we got into the ballroom, I was uh, impressed with uh, the vendor setups and the quilts on the wall and the Buffalo so soldiers um, that were dressed in the marching and everything was so ceremonial. Um, I, I had no idea what we were getting into when he invited me to attend with him. But as we researched uh, the nomination that he had received and then the acknowledgement of him getting the award, I do remember my first conversation with you, Dr. Gloria. And uh, that was a very, very lengthy conversation at that. Uh, we hit it off right away. And uh, I was looking forward to coming to Long Beach, California uh, and attending that. Uh, it was a grand affair in the middle of the afternoon the food was delicious, and uh, and the room was filled with such accomplished people of color, uh, the doctors and the judges and uh, you know civic leaders that were were present. All names that I wasn't familiar with, but I'm a networker and uh, I like to work the room, <laughs> and yeah. uh, it allowed me the opportunity to get to know those who are around me. Uh, the blessing was, uh, and I, I do believe in divine appointments, uh, that the table that you seated us at had a couple who was familiar with not only Nashville, Tennessee, but they were familiar with Nashville hot chicken. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I had said my name and introduced myself and they asked me what I did, and I talked about the pop-up restaurant at the time that Hotville Chicken was was undergoing, uh, they immediately were familiar with Nashville Hot Chicken and the story. And that really resonated with me because um, it just made it seem like I was back at home uh, because people all over the world are now familiar with Nashville Hot Chicken. But when, when they're familiar with Prince's Hot Chicken, it's very, the kindred kinship uh, evolves or it, it starts immediately. and um, that's what the Villager Awards event in the memory of being at that particular award ceremony was like for me. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, I'm glad that says a lot. That says a lot to have you say that because that's exactly the way we wanted it to be. That's exactly the way we wanted it to be. Now, I know I do have some other people that are hanging out there in the wings, so please just bear with us, okay? I, I can see you, but you can't 
not everybody else can see you. The audience can't see you. I can see you because I see my numbers down here. So bear with me and I'll let you in. So uh, Kim, you shared with me before that you're from Nashville, Tennessee, not far from where I'm from, not that far. I'm actually from Little Rock, Arkansas. So I'm from that part of the world, but you know, we're, we're a few hours drive from there, that's for sure. But uh, so tell me just, I want you to tell us just a little bit about uh, Nashville. Growing up in Nashville. Sure. Um, I was actually born in California. Oh. And then as a young little type, my family moved us back to Nashville, Tennessee, to an area actually called College Grove, Tennessee. Uh, again, another divine appointment, not knowing until almost 40 years later how closely uh, connected we were to very soil that I played on as a child uh, that my own grandmother, Wilhelmina Martin Prince, uh, was born not too far away from that same community uh, that the Prince family, my great, great uh, grandmother, great, great grandfather, my great, great uncle Thornton, who started uh, Nashville Hot Chicken as a business in Nashville, Tennessee, that the very soil that they toiled on had a the farm one was just a stone's throw down the road from where I played as a child. So um, it took some, you know, almost 40 years later to discover all that. However, uh, it was working in the family business, Princess Hot Chicken Shack in Nashville, Tennessee, and becoming familiar with everything that our family had done over the years. That was my upbringing. I was a tree climber. I like to fish. I remember my grandfather making me my first fishing pole and I fell in the water. And I have so many stories to tell, but I was an earthy kind of girl. I like to catch frogs and hide them in shoe boxes under my bed <laughs> with, my, with my twin sister and, uh, and my other siblings. There were six of us. My mama is a preacher. My dad was a deacon, Sunday school teacher. Uh, by trade, they were both educators. My grandmother, an educator. My aunt Andre, lovingly, love her so much. Uh, ran the restaurant, Princess Chicken Shack. In our family, we call it the Shack. Um, all my cousins being surrounded by so many of them, and one of them is online today. Um, you know, it was just a fun family field, faith field memory of growing up. Um, you know, we went to church every Sunday. We got up early. We had to wear stockings. <laughs> we had leather shoes and bows in our hair. And, you know, it's just, uh, I wouldn't change any of it. It's, um, you know, being uh, in the household with educators uh, as parents uh, held a high standard. Uh, we um, hit the books instead of being able to play all summer long like most children do. Um, we have book report assignments and um, National Geographic magazines to read and do book reports on. Uh, you know, we collected bugs and grasshoppers and um, stole bird eggs out of the nest. That's, that's my upbringing. And so um, the chicken shack and working at the restaurant was another big piece of, of my childhood. Uh, my earliest recollections at the age of eight, uh, going down to the restaurant and my parents would put us in the station wagon and drive us to the city. It'd take about 30 or so minutes to get there because we lived outside the city in a, a rural area called College Grove. And that uh, experience was, was so enlightening. I mean, we were eager to look for the weekend when my family would take us down to Nashville. So Nashville was a big city to me. Uh, you know, not really familiar with Los Angeles at the time. You know, I was born in the LA area. I didn't have a memory of it because I grew up and was reared in Tennessee. So my the going to the chicken shack, was where I knew I would get to see my city cousins, uh, <laughs> Simone and Ye and Monique and Jerrica and, and my, my, <laughs> my cousin Sean and Valerie and Pam and Sheila and Lamont, you know, all those cousins, I would get to see them 
at Chicken Shack. Uh, we would see them at church. So it was always the weekend. We would go to uh, my aunt Lamona and my aunt Andre. They would take us to the um, Tennessee State football games and we could see the historical black colleges rivaling against each other in a battle of the bands, the majorettes and the trombones and the tubas and you know, all that kind of stuff. So it's like, we look forward to the weekend. And yeah. then the cool thing about all that to make it come full circle was the business, the chicken shack. It wasn't just a place for the family members to meet up and gather, but I earned, I earned some change there. I got some tips from, from the customers and we would uh, be able to bring their greasy brown paper sacks to the table or clean up their table, uh, uh, collect the glass uh, drinking bottles from the, the table and clean up the space. Uh, that was stuff that, you know, I, I didn't know it then that I was going to be doing that as a, as a career <laughs> wow. now, but it definitely had had his roots and and that root ran deep and one of the things that I gleaned from all those experiences in my early childhood was the fact that our family was very very connected we communicated well uh the legacy which wasn't you know termed a legacy at the time um it was something that was you know in observation and it was just passed on there is a, a work ethic that's in our DNA where we work hard, we work smart, um, we apply wisdom and, and we, we let God lead us. And that's how the Prince family is engineered. So I, I, I can't, I don't have any regrets uh, coming to Los Angeles was a big, big leap of faith to start uh, a restaurant. Uh, the restaurant industry is one of the most volatile industries out there for anybody to jump into. You got to be bold and daring to get into this type of industry. Uh, it doesn't come, it comes with, with, with some, you know, some nice applause and spotlight and that kind of thing, but <laughs> it's a tough business to be in, <laughs> very tough business to be in. That's well, for okay. sure. I'll tell you one thing about it, and I'm, I'm sure it is a tough business, but one thing I really admire, and you hear a lot of people say that about you and just, just sort of watching how you're working, uh, is that you seem to be so committed to what you're doing. You know, Absolutely. That, that sort of shines through. I can see that in you. I see it in Greg as well, but I really see it a lot. I was telling them when we were getting ready to do this, this session this evening, and I said, you know what? She is so busy. I mean, it's like every time I pick up a magazine or a TV uh, uh, spot or anything, I see you on there. And I said, uh-oh, I don't know if she's going to even have time for us. We're just going to wait and see. So everybody was going like, I hope so. I hope so. But, oh, but you know, your commitment right. is just wonderful. I mean, the commitment. And I remember one thing you shared with me uh, when I was talking to you earlier and you were talking about... Uh, uh, your, your interest in the youth, particularly, because I know a lot of young people will be looking at this if we share it with the schools. Uh, your interest in, interest in the youth and, and you know helping them to succeed and to see their better selves as well. So can you just talk a little bit about that? Sure, thank you. Um, the you know when I come when I came back to the Los Angeles, Los Angeles and Nashville, while they're the size of the cities are different. Uh, people are the same everywhere you go. Um, I, I found that young people were in need of attention, someone to listen, opportunities uh, for them to apply new skills, learn new skills, and, and then open the door to allow them to pass that on to others. So when we established Hot Bill Chicken, um, one of the things I always said was I wanted High Bill to be a beacon of education, employment, and, and uh, an opportunity to empower. And yeah. so uh, just meeting young people in the community that I live in, where my daughter goes to school, interacting with those young people at church, interacting with those young people. Um, I recognize as I would drive around the city and those who know Los Angeles, you know, there's a lot of people who are just 
sitting. Uh, yeah. I would I would really be amazed at you know getting up at seven and eight o'clock in the morning as I would commute to my former job at NBC Universal. I'd be amazed at the number of young African American men who were one up at that hour, uh, two apparently sitting on a stoop or hanging out on a corner and you know it seemed able-bodied but I always would drive by and wonder like hmm, how do you have time and energy to be up this early and have nothing to do all day uh, I would come home in the evening and see the exact same individuals in the exact same spot and I wonder where they are whether they are all day long <laughs> Um, and, you know, over the years of seeing that kind of thing and talking to other young people, I, I always found that they, they wanted to be heard. Um, I'm, I'll talk to a tree. I'm just how, how I am. I, I can talk to anybody. So there's a lot of times that I would talk to complete strangers and I, and I wanted to find out, like, what was your plight? What, what got you here? Why are you, um, you seem like you're able to do more than just you stand up all day long. That's for sure. So I, I, what does employment sound like to you? Is that something that you run from? Uh, what's your story? And as I got to learn people's stories, um, I saw opportunity to, to open up a door to employ. Um, some of the young people who work at Highville Chicken, uh, they have some amazing stories uh, and they, they work hard. They, they've learned to work harder. Uh, they've, they've learned a skill. Uh, they've learned uh, a trade that will allow them to be gainfully employed for years to come should they choose to. And I wanted Highville Chicken to be that door to allow or expose them to more just standing on the corner, more than barely finishing high school, more than um, trying to figure it out. We, we want to we're teaching them life lessons, you know, we're, we're helping them uh, fill out their first apartment application. And so, uh, you know, getting a voter registration card for the first time. Uh, so, you know, like just those, those are dynamics that I was fortunate enough to have uh, family members and, and colleagues, coworkers who exposed me and I took off, I seized opportunity. I, I, I always use the word glean. I gleaned from every situation and environment I was in. Uh, you know, I, I ear hustled, I paid attention. I took notes, copious notes of that. And uh, I gathered what I knew I could use later. Uh, and trying to instill that into young people now is what Highville Chicken's about. Um, so it's more than just frying chicken and, and putting it on a bun, wrapping it up and putting it in a brown paper sack to me. Uh, to employ those young people and see them get their first car. We've been, Hot Bill Chickens have been at our location here in Los Angeles, at this new location rather, uh, just like 15 months now. And I've seen our workers get their first car, move out, get their first apartment. Um, and so, and, you know, get their voters registration card, actually vote in the last election this past November. And, 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 and that's, that's a nice little, you know, they deserve this, you know, a round of applause, yeah. they just put a pat on the back. And if I can't give it to them because we gotta be socially distant, I tell them to give it to themselves, you know, mm -hmm. those who are watching, give yourself a round of applause for all things you've accomplished in the past 15 months, and then give yourself a hug and pat yourself on the back because nobody else is going to do that for you until you do it for yourself yeah, right yes yeah so now now i, I hope I, i'm i'm if you see me looking down or looking away because i have a facebook audience over here and so i'm sort of looking yeah. down at facebook and going back and forth here but I, I wanted to just say i hope you all see now just as you're listening and we're just not even halfway through here yet sort of what we mean when we talk about the village projects and the villagers and this is sort of what we're talking about we're really talking about uh, having that 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 innate desire. The one thing that you learned, you mentioned all the people that were in the room, the one thing that they all have in common is that innate desire to lift others as we climb. It, it becomes almost second nature to you. We talk about that. We we have a lot of people who are really great mentors. We, we know that. We know we have great mentors out there. 
but there's a difference. There's a difference even when it's, it's a part of who you are as a human being. And I, I remember going to, uh, to the Hodgeville Chicken back when you all were having your opening. And the, the first thing I was most impressed with, even before I even got a chance to eat the chicken, which was wonderful, but I noticed very quickly those young people in there such pride of, of being there, uh, the way they greeted us even when we walked through the door. Um, it was wonderful. It, it was as if every one of them felt a piece, a piece of being a, a part of this family. And so when we were told, I think they had cousins on there. And I remember my son said, oh, I like this. Because we are from Arkansas, as I say, so we feel like we're at home with this. This is really great. So I really, really like this. So just tell me a little bit about how you went about uh, sort of fostering that spirit in them because it really shows it really shows yes uh the um we, we call it our work family uh highville chicken it just I, I woke up with the idea of putting the word uh, it, familial endearing terms on their name tags i didn't just want it to be a name or you know where i'm from and then their name i wanted to put a family term on there so cousin auntie nephew uh, you'll see that when you come to Highville Chicken, you'll see that on their name tags or on their face shields now, they'll, they'll have that on there. So, you know, when you walk through the door, you'll meet Cousin George and Cousin Pam. And one of the first questions people ask, hey, are you a part of the Prince family? Are y'all related? And, and now that we've all worked around each other, they're like, well, not by blood. You know, that's that's some of the responses, you know, we're, we're family, but we're not, you know, not necessarily by blood, but, um, people get the same reaction that, that you and your son experienced. And, and that means a lot to me. Thank you for sharing that because that was intentional uh, to, to have people feel connected. Um, I always use a phrase that people come in as strangers, but they leave like kin. Um, that's how it is even with our vendors. You know, I'm quick to say sis and bro, uh, you know, hey, what's up, you know? <laughs> To, to make sure that people uh, feel like they're invited into our home and we can roam about the cabin even uh, pre-COVID when the restaurant was open and we had indoor dining. Uh, that's something that, that's a phrase we use. You can feel free to roam about the cabin, throw your own trash away, yeah. get your own cup. You know? uh, and that's what you do when you're at home and you feel at home, you get up and you move about. And uh, you know we wanted to make sure that people felt comfortable enough that it was okay for them to not just sit at their own table, pull up a seat next to somebody that you didn't know because that's why chicken is a conversation starter. Yeah. It's, 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 a, it's the type of bird that makes you talk about it. So it's not that you can just contain it to yourself. You'll watch and you look across the room and see other, somebody else just uh, experiencing the hot or our medium level for the first time. And you had to stop and watch and yeah. them going through convulsions and fits because their body is having this reaction to how spicy yeah. the chicken is. <laughs> then they go in for another one and they sweat and people jump up with their phones and start taking video and pictures. That's the conversation part of what yeah. National Hot Chicken is. And you know, I, I don't know that my great great uncle Thornton would have ever thought that Nashville Hot Chicken would be what it is today. But I'm so glad for whoever that woman was <laughs> that gave him the first experience with it. I'm sure she sat back and watched him convulse and shake and sweat. <laughs> well, you but, know what, Kim, Kim, let me interrupt you for just a minute. Can you tell them a little bit about that story? Because it just dawned on me. I oh, wow. Yeah. I know story. Yeah, yeah. You know what? Yeah. It's, it's really interesting that you asked me to tell a story because when people walk into Hotville, I, I asked them to tell me the story because they've heard about it. They're like, is it true? You know, we, we heard or we read. And I'm like, well, you tell me the story. <laughs> what did you hear? And so, you know, it's just like the, the, the tale goes that uh, my great, great uncle, very handsome, tall, Dr. Handsome man, uh, had many, many women around him, the women that were interested in him. And, you know, uh, one mistress in particular got back at him for being around out too late, for instance. And he put cayenne pepper paste all over his fried chicken and he fell in love with it. Um, it was just, you know, a vengeful tale to burn his tail and he liked it. So that's how I go about uh, telling the tale of how Nash Pot Chicken got started. Um, there, there's some, 
some rooted truths in that I've discovered in doing my research. <laughs> uh, uh, the, all the Prince men were very, very handsome men. But they were they were hard workers and uh, and they were excellent cooks. And then the other piece of that tale is the fact that as they uh, passed on, the women in the family uh, pulled their capes out. The women in the family were the ones that held it down. The women in the family, uh, Aunt Maggie Best, great great grandma Mar uh, Mary Prince, uh, uh, Fanny and. Uh, uh, Mamie Bell, uh, those are women who are on the wall at Hot Grilled Chicken. And you'll see them in a picture at Princess Hot Chicken too when you walk into that restaurant. Uh, my aunt runs in Nashville and uh, it, it's the spirit of the women that's kept this legacy alive. Uh, and, and this being March, Women's History Month, it, that it even means more to me now uh, knowing what I do know about those women that I just named, including my Aunt Andre and my cousin Simone, um, you know, that it's, it's the women. My mother, I remember my mother would talk about when she would go down to the chicken shack, she talked about the great big skillets and, and uh, you know, the foil. And it's like, there's a whole bunch of nuances of how the old chicken shack was run and that kitchen, that uh, the, the big kitchen table that was in the middle of this kitchen and it was above my head because I was so small at the time. We had to stand on a bucket just to get up to the top of the table to help prepare a meal, get an order out, uh, standing on top of a bucket so we could use the old cash register that had like the iron, uh, the uh, ivory numbers and the glass slate and, you know, it's just a like very vintage uh cash register. I believe it's in a museum in Nashville now, if I'm not mistaken. There's the, uh, the Museum of History in Nashville, and they actually did an exhibit on Nashville Hot Chicken, and my Andre's picture is there, and they had the old register there, too. I just thought about that. But um, as a kid, I just, I, you know, I, I was I was a little crumb snatcher. I was, wasn't tall enough to stand up there and do them all. I had to stand in a chair on the bucket just so I could help, but it was, it, the women were there. The women were very, very present. And, you know, women, we have, um, and this is a segue, but women, we have a, a, a creative uh, gene and we also have this stick-to-itiveness, mm -hmm. that's a word, uh, to, to, uh, we're, we're resilient. And when I think about the Prince women, especially when I look at the picture that's on our wall, uh, when I look at them, you know, they're not smiling. They're not smiling in that picture, right. uh, you know, but they don't look mean either. Uh, mm -hmm. these, these black women in this picture, there's, there's, a stern, uh, there's a sternness in their eye. There's a determined look in their, in their gaze when I look at that picture. And that, that picture really, really empowers me. Um, you know, I, I smile a lot because I got braces on my teeth and <laughs> makes my lips hurt. But um, I, there's, a, there's times where I remember people would tell me, they're like, why don't you smile? You, you look, you're so serious all the time. No, that, that's that, that, that stern determination, that, that, that focused, uh, I'm thinking right now don't interrupt <laughs> yeah. kind of expression yeah. that i'll have on my face because i'm processing you know what i mean mm -hmm. i'm processing and and you know i recognize that in my daughter who works at the restaurant now kendall kendall mm -hmm. works at the restaurant and a lot of the the team members of our work family they they joke about about her being little kim uh mm -hmm. because she's got that same focus expression on her face all the time you know she'll smile and laugh but she's processing. And so when I think about the women in my family, my twin sister, my older sister, Lamona, and my cousins, uh, they, 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 they are all hardworking women. And, you know, sometimes we took our capes in. I, I was in business <laughs> with superhero capes on. We, we took our capes in, but it's okay for us to pull our capes out. I mean, people know that I got a cape on and I'm capable, capable, of completing like the work that I started to, to execute the vision that God has given me. 
Um, and so, oh, there's a word right there. I like that. Um, <laughs> it's it's definitely quote. something that, that you, you know, it's okay for you to, to feel the, the wind in your sails or, or feel the unction to be able to complete the task. And that's something that, you know, it's just uh, when I started dreaming about the restaurant uh, and, and taking notes and writing it down and, and then going to other restaurants and really paying attention to operations and then, you know, joining different groups and organizations and just learning and doing the research yeah. I, I, that that processing came kept popping up and I came up with the idea of doing a pop-up restaurant so um you know I I'm grateful for being a part of this prince clan that I'm in and having hot chicken run through my veins uh, it it's been um a, a glorious ride it didn't come without its bumps and bruises and and uh and nightmares even <laughs> <laughs> but we're still standing. We're still standing. Yeah. Well, I, I can remember you talking about the pop up restaurants. I can, I can remember that too. I remember mm -hmm. because over here in Long Beach, where I am, I remember when you did it here. It was the talk of the town. Yeah, and, and yeah, I, yeah. You know, I've seen pop ups before. You know, you've had those, but not pop ups that, that garnered that much buzz. I, I hadn't seen that yeah. before. And so all of a yeah. sudden, I thought, "Wow, this is really, this is big. This is, this is really yeah. good places here, no doubt about it." I remember that. I that remember Dr. That. Gloria, that that pop up in Long Beach, it, it ran two days at that first time yeah. we did it in June of 20, uh, 2019. 19, yes. We did it again in July for three days, and they kept asking me to come back, but I was in the process of signing release on our current location so I couldn't continue to do it down there so we were getting ready to get open but Long Beach is, as a city has yeah. has I, I get requests often <laughs> to sure. come back to Long Beach and so I definitely have Long Beach in mind uh, because yeah. they embrace uh, Hot Bill and, and Nashville Hot Chicken uh, they, they definitely have a, a craving for it yeah. in Long Beach. so much so that I see a lot of the a lot of the people that I met at your awards in 2019 and 2018, right. actually. 2018. Yeah, 18. Uh, it was 2018. Uh, some of those same individuals that I met who attended the award ceremony then are still customers that come in the high veil to this day. I see them yes. all the time, as a matter yes. of fact. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> we, we're, glad to hear, we're glad to hear that, you know. Oh, okay. yeah. Thank you. The next time when we do a villager awards, once we get past all of the pandemic and everything, I, and, and we have this vision of having it sort of in, in an open spot like in a park or a concert somewhere and having it cater. And so we talked about this would be a really yeah. wonderful thing now. So sure. everybody's really got the taste and taste buds in their mouths now, that's for sure. <laughs> let, let me go on to another, another piece to this. When we had talked before too, you had talked a lot about uh, the role of, of faith in, in, in your, in your uh, and not only in your upbringing, but also in sort of guiding you as, as you're going through through where you are now. Can you talk just a little bit about that? Yes, uh, I feel like I was born on a pew. Uh, real quick, uh, when my mother uh, was uh, baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost, uh, mm -hmm. Kelly and I uh, were, were not long in her belly. And yeah. uh, so, you know, without telling our age or how long ago that was, <laughs> My twin sister and I uh, were, were born to, to save parents. And, um, and and by that, I mean that my, both my mother and my father, um, their, their upbringing in church, sure. Um, however, they got a personal relationship with the Lord mm -hmm. uh, around the time that I was born in the 70s. So having uh, praying parents, uh, and, and, and weekly Bible classes at home, uh, prayer night. Uh, and this, this is something that the family still does even as of tonight, as a matter of fact, just a few hours ago. Um, you know, it's just, it's, it's, uh, it's something that definitely rooted in, in our, in the fabric of who we are. Um, the Bible says, you know, train a child in the way it should go. And when they are old, they won't depart from it. Uh, you might, it didn't say you might not you stray away, but it just it said you won't depart from it. So I'm, I'm grateful for faith being definitely a part of who I am 
and it's very much present in my life right now. Um, my mother, I did say, is an evangelist. She was a pastor for a while. And uh, just watching her uh, get the vision of opening up a church and then moving the church and then closing her church, closing the church down, but continuing her ministry, uh, uh, traveling ministry as an evangelist and writing her first book and uh, having to type out her sermons personally myself. You know, I got very, very acquainted with uh, her, her preaching style and everything. Uh, I am also, a lot of people don't know that I'm a sign language interpreter and I did interpret in church too. So, uh, you know, I was always connected to the word of God. Um, you know, I um, participated in, I sang in the choir, directed the choir, I ran the audio and mics at, <laughs> when I was in college at the church that I attended. Uh, so, you know, I was usher, oh my goodness, and, you know, mm -hmm. frying chicken and doing, you know, fish fries and oh, yeah. raising money for the youth department so we could travel somewhere, going to the conventions and the council meetings and, and serving in a district leadership role uh, with the with our church as well. And so it's, um, I, I was pretty much born on a pew in a sense, you know, uh, my twin sister is yeah. married to an amazing uh, man, Brian Harris, my brother-in-law, and uh, my twin sister was blessed with a very, very awesome man of God. He is a pastor yeah. in the North Bay area, a city called Vallejo, California, so shout yeah. out to Emmanuel Temple Apostolic Church in Vallejo, <laughs> California. <laughs> I gotta give them a shout out. Yes, I know yes. on Facebook, they're probably watching. Yes. Uh, but just in a uh, Peace Apostolic Church down in Carson, California, uh, that was uh, pastored by and founded by the late Howard Arthur Swansea. Uh, his daughter is my, his oldest daughter, Tamri, Tammy Prince, is my sister-in-law. So my oldest brother's married to his daughter. Uh, so there's a lot of little preacher circles around me. <laughs> yeah. A lot of my best friends are are in the ministry uh, in some way, shape, or form. And so uh, just, you know, having traveled and, and, and been to, to many, many churches and, and even churches of other faiths, uh, you know, assemblies and organizations of other faiths. You know, I, again, I was a gleaner. I'm always processing, paying attention to what's around me. And so that made me curious uh, to want to know, well, you know, what do they believe? What does this group believe? Be respectful of what people believe as well. Uh, I think all that has brought me full circle, but even where I am right now as a restaurateur, as a business owner, I have to be able to relate to everybody. I didn't have to assimilate to everybody, but I had to relate to everybody. I had to be able to communicate with everybody. And so um, it makes, it, it, it postures me differently uh, mm -hmm. to be able to mm -hmm. communicate with those who, who come into our restaurant even now. But one thing about Hotville Chicken, when you cross our, our doors, just know that those doors have been prayed over. Uh, right. those, those walls have been, have have anointed blessed oil on all of them. Uh, right. the door handles, uh, you know, every square inch of that that place has been covered in yeah. uh, in prayer. So that's that's the type of faith filled believer I I am and my family members are. Uh, yeah. So you know, anytime. You know, next time my mother comes through, uh, I never have to worry about my mom when she disappears throughout the restaurant. You know, she's washing dishes or she's milling around, touching tables. And do I know what my mom's doing? My mom is <laughs> praying. Mom, so she, you know, she'll come up and talk to the customer. But best believe she she prayed for you <laughs> as yes, well. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. It's right. wonderful. Wonderful. So let me ask, let me ask you one other thing related to that. Uh, tell me, um, you mentioned sign, sign language, sign language interpreter. How did you get started with that? Right. Uh, you know, the whole time my hands been down, I'm always moving them. Yeah. Um, I, I, wow, my first, in, my first introduction to sign language was a, a deaf neighbor. When I was a young child, we had a deaf neighbor that we played with. And uh, so I picked up some sign language from her. Uh, my mother being a school teacher, and she learned some sign language, and my mother taught us some. Uh, but it really happened for me um, about 12 or so years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, I was at church in Nashville and um, I, I sat where the other interpreter sat and there was a need for um, someone to help support the sign language ministry. And so I dove in, I dove in and, and started learning right away uh, how to become an interpreter. 
And so um, while I was in Nashville, Tennessee at Mount Zion uh, Baptist Church under Bishop Joseph Warren Walker III, I uh, became an interpreter there and uh, for several years. And then when I moved back to California, there was a need uh, for an interpreter because we had deaf guests who became members of the church. I uh, became an interpreter and a lead at, at my church in Carson. So, um, but I sign all the time, uh, even at the restaurant, uh, we have Postmate drivers who show up and they happen to be deaf or hard of hearing. And it, there's, there's a, a sense of relief uh, when they walk in because there's familiarity, they know that they can communicate with someone. And so um, I definitely use it to my advantage to be able to communicate with those that are in the deaf community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow, you, you, are, you are amazing. I tell you, definitely a, 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 a full circle woman here in many different ways. <laughs> I'm so happy we're, we're having this conversation. I'm Aaron, still, still learning. Oh, well, aren't we all? Yes, yes. We, and open to it. That's, that's what's wonderful, too. Let's be open to it. That's amazing. Let me ask you something. I noticed in, in one of the pictures that you sent me, there was one with the H-E-R, the Hero Restaurant. Uh, please tell us a little bit about that. Sure. Uh, RegardingHerFood.com. Yeah. So Regarding Her Food, it, it, it was an organization of women-owned restaurants in support of other women-owned restaurants in Los Angeles due to the pandemic. It was a response to the pandemic. Um, back in December of 2020, mm -hmm. I was approached by a couple of the founding uh, members to ask, and I was asked to become one of those members to help build out what the organization was going to become and to help plan a 10 day festival that we just completed in January of 2021. So we did a 10 day food festival event, and that was just filled with lots of virtual experiences, uh, meal kits, and, and uh, virtual uh, food do-it-yourself or food classes and you know the opportunities to do food demonstrations uh, and collaborations with other women-owned restaurants in Los Angeles. So as a, a, becoming a part of that organization has been an inspiration for me. Uh, it started off as an opportunity for women to support one another, uh, recognizing that you're not by yourself. Uh, COVID didn't just affect your restaurant, it affected all restaurants and uh, we were it gave us a platform to be able to talk to one another. Uh, to figure out, how, you know, how did you get through it? Or what grant did you apply for? And, and mm -hmm. just a resource of support uh, and access to information even. Um, we're learning so much from one another. Uh, it started off with the nine founding members in Los Angeles. So regarding her food, uh, you can go to the website regardingherfood.com and learn about all of the different things that we're even doing here in the month of March, Women's History Month. Uh, we've got a lot of different campaigns and activities going on later on this month that uh, not only my restaurant is a part of, a, a part of, but there's over a hundred restaurants that are woman owned really? here in LA, here in LA. I mean, and, 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 and there's more uh, as a result of the organization uh, formalizing, we're, we're, it's like the women are coming out from the dark. Um, they're, they're coming out from the different corners of LA uh, to say, hey, we're over here in East LA, we're in North LA, we're in South LA, we're in the South Bay area, and, and how can we participate? How can we be a part? Uh, the other cool thing about regarding her food, as a result of COVID-19, we have a grant program that's going to get announced real soon, so stay tuned to that, but the grant program is intentional to support women-owned businesses in the food industry. Uh, there is a great, great need we're discovering. Uh, and then there's a lot of restaurants that have had to close down due to COVID. And we want to see those restaurants revived. We want to see those restaurants open up again. We want to see those restaurants sustain. We want to see those restaurants thrive. Uh, and so I'm, I'm not the only one. Some of the challenges that COVID threw at us uh, this past year, it was tough. You know, even my, my restaurant wasn't sure. We weren't sure if we were going to be able to stay open, but I was committed to stay open. Uh, closing the doors wasn't an option for me. So um, meeting these this other group of women uh, and realizing and hearing their stories and learning that they had six restaurants and now they're down to one, uh, that they had 300 employees and now they're left 40. 
I said, wow, goodness gracious. I, you know, at least I didn't have to make, you know, very crucial decisions like that to have to actually, uh, you know, lay off and not one or two people, but hundreds of people. And so, I mean, I'm just amazed uh, that, that I'm in the company of amazing, strong uh, women who are successful and who have, who are accomplished so much with their restaurants. Um, and I've just got one, but I'm, I'm surrounded by women who actually have more than, you know, they have a couple of restaurants and catering businesses, so much more. And, and they're still dreaming. They got their capes on, they got their capes on and they're showing <laughs> yeah. how comfortable they are. So yeah. uh, that's regarding her food. Uh, and so that's something to really, really pay attention to. It's caught a national uh, audience as well, a national attention. So there's a lot more information that's going to come about because of my involvement and other women that are involved with regarding her food. Uh, this is just really fascinating to me. I'm, I'm, just, I'm even more impressed, I think, than when I first heard it, because the story gets richer and richer every mm -hmm. time we hear it. You know, we get to hear sort of the depths of it all. And, and I think what the story that you tell has such relevance, I think, and, and we always listen, particularly for young people who we think really right. need to hear these kinds of stories. So let me ask you one other piece. Of, well, I keep saying one other piece, and then I keep coming <laughs> up with another question because it's just a rich conversation. But let me ask you, because I know that you and Greg have been partners here in this business world for a long time. Well, not for a long time, but a relatively long time now. But and, and that just seems to be a perfect, that's a perfect partnership, I think. I thought this Indeed. is like wonderful. So I just want to tell us a little bit about that. Sure. Um, I have to say Greg Doolin and, and the Doolin family, they came along at a time when Hotville Chicken was just a pop-up. Mm -hmm. uh, back in 2017, I was in a borrowed kitchen down in Chinatown of all places of LA. Uh, so, you know, it's looking like a fish out of water for sure. <laughs> this black woman with this pop-up restaurant <laughs> doing fried chicken <laughs> in Chinatown. But uh, that, and, and even to add to that, I was in an Italian pizzeria. <laughs> and so me and my one little fryer, and then we added a second fryer. Um, we fried chicken at that pop-up every Saturday. Uh, started in the end of 2016. So December 2016, we're there. Um, we, we got some recognition from a online publication that wrote an article about Nashville Hot Chicken coming to LA and who the Prince family was. And, and they talked about me. And uh, that article uh, hit the desk of Greg Dewey. And so one Saturday he shows up and there's this line wrapped all the way around the corner, some 300 deep at that. I wish he was on line to tell the story himself, but uh, he was in that line for about an hour and a half and gave up because the line wasn't moving. <laughs> line wasn't moving at all. Now inside the restaurant, we had a packed house. We were wall to wall filled with people, orders that were like falling off of the off of the table I mean, we had so many orders and we were going to run out of chicken relatively <laughs> soon uh so he made his way to the front trying to figure out what is going on and yeah. so he sent a message that he 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 could help uh so uh he sent a message saying that he he thinks he could help uh let's meet and so i i met with him for the first time and while i have been a patron of the doing uh doing yeah. kitty's back porch doing soul food kitchen and doing on crenshaw I've been a patron plenty of times. I never had an opportunity to meet Greg or his father, the late Adolph Doolin. Uh, but as a result of meeting with him that first time and talking to him, he came back to our pop-up again. And we sat and we talked restaurants. We sat and we talked about operations, we talked about uh, food cost analysis. <laughs> we yeah. talked about inventory control. You know, all the stuff that comes with the territory of being a restaurant owner. It was water that I wasn't familiar with. And I always say that he helped me navigate through those waters because they were trouble for me. Um, my, my business was, you know, every Saturday, how was I going to grow that to be something that operated on a full-time basis? Uh, yes. You know, he's the one who encouraged me. He's like, you gonna, you know, you're going to have to quit your day job, right? And I was like, yeah, I know. But, but he, he was what I had been praying for because I prayed for somebody to yes. help me. And I said, I need help, I need help. And yes. and and along came Greg Doolin. Yes. And so that's another one of those divine appointments. So I don't forsake the fact that I met him the way I did. Yes. And as a result over the years, 
of us just talking restaurants and evolve in a relationship where we could become business partners. Uh, it helped us fortify a stake in our own community to where we could open up Hotville right in our own backyard. So right on Crenshaw Boulevard at the Baldwin Hills Crenshaw Plaza Mall, you will find Hotville Chicken, all 2,700 plus square feet of a space with chandeliers, yes. wood tables, wood floor, uh, you know, chicken coop wire on the walls. It came like that. It was a turnkey space that uh, actually used to be the former first location of Goldenberg Fried Chicken, if I'm not mistaken. Goldenberg Fried Chicken was there, started by the Stennis family. Wow. So, so you can't tell me God didn't work because yeah. I, I, I know firsthand that, that everything that he has plotted for my feet, for my feet, my path yeah. take, has yeah. been divinely appointed for me to do what I'm doing right now, mm. right where I am. So um, so there I am. Some people call it the old Fat Burger building because after it was Golden Burger, it became Fat Burger. Okay. So, and, and who was Fat Burger started by? A black woman, black right? Exactly. Exactly. That was the point, but yes. Exactly. Wow. I think you've muted yourself by accident, Kim. I think you're muted. There Sorry. You go. I love the things that I'm learning about being in Los Angeles in the Oops. Just hang with us, you guys. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, I was saying, I, I love the, the what I'm learning about being right where I am right now. Okay, so let's recap that. Let me rewind. The location that Highville Chicken is currently in, 46th yeah. Marlton Avenue, used to be Goldenberg Fried Chicken. Started by the Stennis family, right? Yes, yes. Okay. yes. Zelma Stennis. Okay. Then we had Fat Burger in that location. Same location I'm in. Zell, uh, the, 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 the Fat Burger was started by the Black Woman, right? right? Uh, her, her original location is over on Western Avenue, maybe not even a mile from where I am right now. Uh, but uh, the original Fab Burger, Mr. Fab Burger's hamburger stand started by a black woman. Then the location I'm in right now became Michelle's Country Diner. They added on 1,100 square feet onto the just for me. They built it out. I feel like they built it out just for me. Michelle's Country Diner, owned by Michelle Lair. Uh, it opened, uh, it lasted about three years. She closed the business down in 2018. By December of 2018, I got the phone call that I never, never thought that I would get. We have been looking high and low, far and wide for Hotville Chicken to find a location. Uh, I was still doing pop-ups and pop-ups were successful, but I didn't have a permanent location. People referred to Hotville Chicken as a, a Nashville Hot Chicken vagabond. <laughs> But we found a location. The partnership between Greg Doolin and I uh, got us the attention of a phone call from the partners at the Baldwin Hills Crenshaw Mall. And they said, hey, we heard this chicken concept. We might have a space for you. So as a result of that phone call and the partnership with Greg, that allowed us to like walk through this space. We saw it. We're like, oh, we're already familiar with that because we used to eat there when it was Michelle's Country Diner. Uh, when I first ate there, I never really saw it in the future as a space that I would occupy. But when I got in there and they told us, hey, this space is becoming available, we said, yes, whatever it is, we got. Now that, now that we're in it, now that we're in it, it's like it was so peaceful. Uh, the, the transition of moving into the space was easy. It has some expense attached to it, but uh, I, I can say that it, 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 it wasn't as, it wasn't complicated. The process was easy. And I think that's how God works. Uh, when, when your steps are divinely ordered, 
he makes he makes your path straight. He makes your steps smooth. Um, you know, because I have fallen fallen and bumped my skipped my knees many times <laughs> trying to find a location. But uh, where we are now, I, I, I'm grateful for it. We take great pride and joy in being in uh, being in our current location. Um, the mall itself, our, our the landlords are great people to work with. Pre uh, real uh, retail services, great people to work with. Um, and then our, our our customers, our kinfolk, they are just this part of Los Angeles has embraced us with a southern hug. It's been wonderful. Uh, not, not without its challenges, and we got some folks that give us some challenge, but uh, and I think every restaurant tour experiences that. But it's been great. Uh, every day we meet people who, and we've got the repeat customers. That's That's been all of a part of, um, you know, an extension of what the Doolin family created. So you got these two food families, the Prince family and the Doolin family now. Uh, Greg's restaurant is right down the street. I say it's a stone's throw away. So if I ever need something, you know, we ran out of potatoes recently. I'm like, hey, go over to Doolin's and get some potatoes for me. <laughs> these are potatoes. And so uh, being in close proximity is, is a wonderful part of the partnership. Uh, we support each other's restaurants. We support each other's vision. And as a result of the union between the two uh, of us, that partnership has created something new called Doolinville. Doolinville has four wheels. We're a food truck now. So we've got Doolin Soul Food Restaurant and Highville Chicken. I saw it, yes. One food truck now. And uh, that launched in January. It was painstaking to even go through the process. We have a pandemic staring down the throat. Uh, we weren't sure how long it was gonna take for the food truck to get on the road. Mm -hmm. We got it up and going. Uh, we finished the truck uh, latter part of last year. We put it on the road in January. Uh, we're looking at engagements constantly. And if anybody was watching the news today, we made an announcement yes. uh, with some brand partners called Family Food Fest, uh, Family Fest, Family yes. Style Fest. You say uh -huh. it right. Family Style Fest, <laughs> the three day drive in movie theater at the new yes. SoFi Stadium at the end of this month. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That's all. That's what partnership will do for you. So it really you will. Pray, pray for God to connect you to the right person. Yes. The right individual, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. important. Just, just yeah. absolutely perfect. I mean, really and truly and blessed, really in many ways. And you call you yeah. call it a food truck. Now people out there in Facebook land and, and here on Zoom. And that's way that that is like I call it like a mobile restaurant almost. It's wonderful. It really, really is. I'm so impressed with that. And 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 with the vision, you can almost see the vision in that. You know, it's easy for us to sort of as, as a consumer and a customer out here. I find it very easy for us to actually see see your vision. We can see it and how things are are materializing. And I think that's really important too. You know, you really, you really see that. So I'm, I'm coming to the end of my time here. Yeah, you have to have faith. Faith oh, yeah. is, is, the, is the first step in, in it. You, you got to have faith. You got to pray for a vision. And as the vision comes, it may come in sketches of black and white. You may mm. not have all the colors filled in. You remember coloring books that just had outline and color yeah. by number. But mm -hmm. you, you had to look at the legend. You had to read the instruction. And put, the, put all the right colors in. And eventually yeah. you have this amazing masterpiece or a beautiful picture. Uh, that's that's how Hotville came to be, and it took partnership. It, it, it took making mistakes. It took scratches and bruises and burns, you know, cuts. <laughs> it yeah. took all that, Gosh, but I didn't yeah. give up. You know, I didn't give up, and, and I'm still learning. I'm forever going to be a student. I'm gonna keep learning and keep getting certifications, and you know, mm -hmm. I, I definitely study the art of, of being a, a, a culinary artist. I'm paying attention. There's more than just fried chicken capable of doing more right. fried chicken but how the chicken does national hot chicken that's that's what i'm interested in but it really really required faith and failing forward not being afraid to fail you, you have to get back up and keep trying that's the yeah. whole point of this so you know it's more than fried chicken i'm sure that my great great uncle thornton failed many many times mm -hmm. many times i'm if we were to get my aunt andre 
going on. She could keep us on for hours, the story after story after story, many stories she shared with even me uh, of, of times where it just got tight and tough and you, yes. know, you had to run two nickels together and mm -hmm. create a dollar so you could buy something. You know, it's just, I, I totally understand the challenges, uh, you know, you got to look at them like challenges that you can overcome test that you have to pass and that's how I approach uh, that's that's kind of my business philosophy but you know all that's deeply rooted in the faith that I was born into and and have and, and thus I believe <laughs> yes 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 well thank you so much for being with us tonight we're about to run out of time but before mm -hmm. before I go all I'm running out of time because I hadn't figured out yet how to bring some people on camera but there are a few people here that I know you know I'm just going to call with some of the names here and then you can okay. you know, say whatever it is or tell them a little bit about the audience, a little bit about who they are to you. So I see Simone. No, no, no. Let me start with Kelly because that's your, your other okay. piece here. So tell us about yeah. Kelly. Even though I can't bring her on, you can tell us a little bit about her here. You told us already a little bit. but Right. Kelly is my twin sister in North California, Northern California, the Vallejo. And her son, Levi, works in our kitchen right here in L.A., yeah. Okay. That's my oh, oh, right. Oh, very good. It's a real family affair then. Absolutely. And then, and then Simone, go ahead, I'm sorry. You said Simone? Yeah, Simone. Simone Jeffrey. That's my Andre's second daughter. And she is a GM and runs Princess Hot Chicken Shack in uh, Los Angeles. Not in Los Angeles. In Nashville, Tennessee, my cousin Simone. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. shout out. Very good. And yeah. Allie, Allie, is that right? A L I, Allie? Uh, uh, is it Alina? Well, a L I N A. There's an Alina here, too. Yeah. Oh, Back there's here. a, so there's an Ali. Yeah, there's Ali and Alina. Uh -huh. Hold on. Oh, oh, maybe that's my sister. My other sister, Lamona, is Ali. Oh, and really? then, <laughs> yeah, and then the Alina uh, uh, Margolis is uh, one of our, our bread vendor from a bread bar in El Segundo, California. She did say oh, she, okay. she's going to be a part of it. Thank you. Okay, I just wanted to just call out at least a few of them here, I think, and apologize to you all for not being able to bring you on camera. But, uh, oh yeah, Ali. Oh, Ali, yeah. Oh yeah, because I have a sister named Ali, but I, I, he just sent a note. So Ali is the president of Bread Bar Company in Los in El Segundo, California. So they make the amazing buns that uh, we put our shawl chicken sandwich on. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, there's a little divine story in that because I didn't know that they existed. And uh, one of their representatives called out of the blue one day, and this is about two years ago and showed up with all these amazing assortment of bread buns. I mean, bread I had never even heard of. Mm -hmm. and, uh -huh. and, and we exchanged information and they showed up with all this assortment of buns. And we tried those buns out at Dual and Soul Food, as a matter of fact. And as a result of that random interaction, you know, it was just, I had never heard of, heard of them, but they found us and he brought those buns by. And I said, I'm opening up a restaurant one day. And I contacted them to let them know that I was going to be opening up the restaurant. And we finally had a location. And we met and found the right size bun. Did a, recently did a tour of their space down in El Segundo, California. We got some projects up our sleeve. So Mr. Ali he has come through the restaurant. And he has taken recipes to test out for us. And so I think there's a long, long relationship there. Another partnership, indeed, that I'm excited about, and there, and and that bread company is is small, but they've got a long, rich history, and they're very family-like, and that's what I like about uh, using the bread bar uh, to make our buns. Interesting. Wow. So thank you for joining. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you all. And I'm getting some feedback. I'm not exactly sure where it's coming from. Okay. But it, we're going to have to come to a close here now. And so I'm going to say thank you so much. Uh, just thank you so much, Ken. Okay. Thank you. I think you can see that at least message. Thank I did. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir.
He he works hard. Yes. Okay. And so we're gonna say goodbye and uh, thank you. And we will be getting to you uh, your uh, your real award. You get the award, so we will be presenting it to you. As well. And yes. I'm gonna have to say goodbye to you. Thank yeah, you. so I'm looking forward to receiving the award that you all gave uh, out in 2018. Those were beautiful. I, I mean, I, I admire it every time I see it. It's a gorgeous award. And I, I just, you know, to be nominated and, and I'm honored that you would uh, even consider me. And thank you so much for your time. Uh, and I always look forward to sending in my pledge because I do support your endeavors. Really and I definitely support you all and what you're doing and the young people that you're inspiring and working with. Yes, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna say goodbye to that. I wanna put a picture as I go out to the rest of it. Bless you. Right. And with that, we will end it and we will leave it up. And thank you all so much for coming. Thank all of you out there in, in uh, Facebook land as well. Uh, we really appreciate your attendance. Please know that. And we ask you to please go ahead and share this uh, with other people who might be watching indeed. And I know it's being shared now on a number of different pages. And uh, we will look at those comments and questions that you have. And I'll make sure that I pass those on as well. We're really honored to have had Kim Prince here with us uh, this afternoon, tonight, and maybe we'll get her back another time. But thank you so much.